This is Chris Hemsworth as Thor. The official teaser for Thor Love and Thunder dropped this week and YouTube is kind of freaking out something big. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you're pretty pumped up for this film this summer. This is also Chris Hemsworth as Fat Thor. <laughs> and I'm not kidding, Jimmy Fallon gave him that name several years ago. It kind of became a thing. Fat Thor singing Johnny Cash's version of the song Hurt is not why we're here, however. No, we're here because this was almost Chris Hemsworth, and frankly, I'm a little bummed it never happened. Find the time codes to jump ahead in the description section if you just can't wait for the details. I'm Billy Dukes, and if you're new to the channel and love country music, tap subscribe because it's what we do best. I'm going to recommend our Secret History of Country Music series as a great place to begin exploring our videos. You can find a link in the corner in the description section of this video. If you're here because you saw Thor in the title, and that kind of made you tingle a little bit, then you need to check out our friends over at Screen Crush because Marvel movies are what they do best. I'm also linking to their expansive Thor Love and Thunder breakdown in the corner in the description section. It's a monster of a video. Chris Hemsworth's first big screen appearance as Thor came in 2011 in a movie called Thor. Do you swear to cast aside all selfish ambition and to pledge yourself only to the good of the realm? I swear! That movie did pretty well, like $449 million well, so someone said, hey, let's do it again, and they made another, and another, plus added them to all the Avengers films. I want to zoom in on a time between Thor Dark World in 2013 and Avengers Age of Ultron in 2015. That's when news like this began to circulate. Chris Hemsworth to star in a movie about Hank Williams' ghost. Yeah, that's a lot to take in. The rumor for one big week was that Australian actor Chris Hemsworth had optioned the rights to produce and star in a movie based on a 2011 Steve Earle novel that's somewhat based on country music legend Hank Williams' death. I'll Never Get Out Alive was Hank's very last single before he died in 1953. I'll never get out of this world alive. Steve Earle is of course an outlaw country singer, influenced by Hank. In the book, Toby Doc Ebersol is a former doctor who tries to support a morphine habit by performing illegal medical procedures. Hank Williams' ghost visits him often, presumably torturing him. In real life, Horace Toby Marshall was a doctor, and I'm air quoting over here, who went by Dr. C.W. Lemon. He was Hank's personal doctor, the man who wrote a bunch of fraudulent prescriptions that likely contributed to the singer's death. He wasn't a doctor. In fact, he'd just been released from prison on forgery charges a year or two earlier. The new movie was an indie film with a script from Benjamin Grayson, who was going to direct it, and the rap points out that Ben was Kenneth Branagh's assistant on Thor in 2011, so Chris and Ben were kind of boys. In fact, a look at IMDb indicates that they're still friends today, but you can't find anything about this Hank Williams ghost story. Why? The movie was never released, and likely never made, but another movie starring Tom Hiddleston was made. Tom plays Loki alongside Hemsworth's Thor. That film was called I Saw the Light, and if you've ever wondered what it'd look like if Loki sang country music, I got you. All right, boys, let it roll. All right, the movie was pretty so-so. It didn't make a big splash, but some people enjoyed it. I say some because Hank Williams' grandson, Hank III, did not. He bashed the movie, specifically Tom's performance, saying that he thought an American from the South needed to play the lead role. In remarks that sound a bit prejudiced, Hank III said, quote, and as far as a European actor playing an American icon, in my eyes, that in itself is a super weak foundation for a country music icon. Granddaughter Holly was more forgiving. Rolling Stone reported that she appreciated the work that Tom put in. He's British, by the way, from London. So, did Thor grow scared? Maybe Steve Earle had something to do with it. Remember, the movie was based off of his first novel, I'll Never Get Out Alive. I will say that Hank's family doesn't love his image being played with, so they could have resisted the idea. I saw the light was only so-so. Did they really want another outsider portrayal? A reasonable explanation is that Chris just hasn't gotten to it. I mean, look at his acting credits from 2012 on. He's busy. I believe Chris would have played the doctor, by the way, not Hank, if only because he's much bigger than Hank Williams. We may never know. We may only have this as proof that he can sing and play guitar. A little bit anyways. Everyone I know goes away. I'm Billy 
Dukes with Taste of Country. Thanks for watching, and thanks for subscribing.